Well, hello everyone. I'm Tyler Cressman. Welcome to this week's Cressman Conversation. This week, there is only one story that deserves our attention. It's obviously the biggest story in the country, and that is the fact that the Super Bowl booked Jennifer Lopez and Shakira for the halftime show. I'm super pumped. I know you are as well. Kidding. Uh, the impeachment of Donald Trump. There's obviously nothing else we are going to be able to talk about this week. That is all the news has been for the past week is the impeachment of Donald Trump. So there's going to be a lot to get through here. This is a big topic. We're going to jump right in. First, we're going to talk a little bit about impeachment. What is it? Let's get a little bit of the history out of the way. Um, so impeachment, this is the definition, is a charge of misconduct against a person that holds public office. If the charge proves valid, it is a way to remove someone who is derelict in their duty accountable. It is a way to keep them accountable. It's a way to remove someone who abdicates their duty to the people they've been elected by. So it's good. Uh, there's a reason why it's in the Constitution. It's for people who just, well, it's in there for a lot of reasons, but people who don't adhere to the standards of the office that they hold. It's a way to remove them in between voting them out of office or from lifetime appointments like judges and whatnot. Uh, well, what does it mean exactly? Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution states, the President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and convictions of treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, treason and bribery, fairly straightforward. Those ones, obviously, we all know what they mean. One of the interesting bits about this phraseology has been the debate about what it means high crimes and misdemeanors. It's always a hot topic. High, high crimes, in this case, the word high, tends to refer to the office and not the crime. You know, you, if you hold a high office, it's not necessarily talking about the crime it has to be some grave offense. That's actually just not the case. Uh, in the second half of, even though the second half of the phrase is misdemeanors, high crimes does not have to be criminal in nature either. Uh, typically impeachable offenses have included dishonesty, negligence, perjury of oath, abuse of authority, bribery, intimidation, misuse of public funds or assets, failure to supervise, dereliction of duty, unbecoming conduct, refusal to obey lawful orders, chronic intoxication, and things such as tax evasion. A very important bit of the Constitution, the ability to hold people elected accountable. Alexander Hamilton in Federalist 65 described impeachable offenses as arising from, quote, the misconduct of public men, or in other words, the abuse or violation of some public trust. They are of a nature which may with peculiar propriety be denominated politically, and they are, and they relate chiefly to injuries done immediately to the society itself. So it is a misuse of public trust. It's basically the, what impeachment is supposed to be about. This idea that someone commits a grave offense against the people that elected them, and they need to be held accountable. So it's very important, very important. Uh, Congress has generally identified three types of conduct that constitute grounds for impeachment. Although these categories are not exhaustive in nature, they are the general categories. Uh, one, improperly exceeding or abusing powers of the office. Two, behavior incompatible with the function and purpose of the office. And three, misusing the office for improper purpose or personal gain. Article 1, Section 2, Clause 5 of the Constitution. The House of Representatives shall choose their speaker and the officers and shall have the sole power of impeachment. So this basically is where we're at right now today. Uh, the House shall have the sole power of impeachment. That means that they are the ones who bring charges of impeachment against officers of the court or public officials. It's kind of analogous to bringing criminal charges by the grand jury. The House has begun impeachment proceedings 62 times since 1789, and 19 federal officials have been formally impeached uh, as a result. This is including two presidents, Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton, one cabinet secretary, William Belknap, one senator, William Blount, one Supreme Court associate justice, Samuel Chase, and 14 federal judges. Also, when impeachment proceedings were opened against Richard Nixon, he resigned, uh, but he probably would have been impeached as well. So if convicted in the House, the Senate then will act as the judge and jury. 
they uh, have to uphold the findings of the House by a two-thirds majority. If they do that, the person is then removed from office. This is why someone like Bill Clinton can be impeached in the House, but was not removed from office because the Senate was split 50-50 on whether or not to uphold the findings of the House. It basically was a partisan split down the middle. Okay, so that's a little bit overview, just a brief overview of what impeachment is, why we have it, why it's important. Uh, the idea that we would elect someone, for example, uh, elect a president who then turns out to be some sort of monster and needs to be removed from office because he's actually doing harm to the United States. He actually, the secret fear, he was a Soviet infiltrator who played the long con, got elected, and now is doing the biddings of the Russians. So that idea, treason, bribery, dereliction of duty. We need to be able to hold political, uh, duly elected political figures accountable. So impeachment's great. Impeachment is great for that, but it is a very serious matter. It is not something that should be done lightly. None of the founding fathers believed that it should be a first resort, and they all believed that it should only be used in extreme cases. That's why in the entire history of the United States, uh, 19 people have been impeached. I think we just said 19, right? 19. <clears throat> so let's talk about today. Let's talk about modern time. Because obviously the impeachment of Donald Trump is on everybody's mind. It is an unfortunate occurrence that we have to have a conversation about impeachment around any president. I don't care who it is. Let's talk about it. So the House opened up, Nancy Pelosi opened up impeachment an impeachment inquiry about Donald Trump this week. Basically, that's just a formal process of something that was already happening. They already had four or five committees investigating various aspects of Donald Trump's cabinet, his life, everything about him. So this is just a way to formally acknowledge that they are looking into impeachment now. Uh, this is, there's a problem for the Democrats today. And that is the fact that this has nothing to do with Russian collusion. And this is a huge problem for Democrats because for the past two and a half years, they have been talking Russia, 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 impeachment, impeachment, impeachment. And then they had the Mueller report come out. It basically alleged some less than stellar things about the Trump administration, but absolutely had no grounds of an impeachable offense in there. And then the public said, well, this is, this is nothing. What are we doing? And so now the unfortunate fact is that even if this Ukraine scandal, which we're going to get into in detail, even if this Ukraine scandal is something, then people don't have a taste for it. Because you've spent the last two and a half years screaming impeachment, 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 and now it just looks like you're chasing impeachment and looking for any excuse to do it. And so that's the, that is the, these are the optics. Now, whether or not this is true is up for debate. But these are the optics of the average person. They say, you've said Donald Trump was a Russian spy for two and a half years, colluding with the Russians, doing all these nefarious things. This entire 400-page report came out. Anyone who read it would say, yeah, Donald Trump did some questionable things. But the entire first half of the report showed no collusion, basically, or at the, uh, I guess what would be better to say, uh, not anything that rises to a level that should have been deemed impeachable. And the second half is about a cover-up of a crime that you didn't find evidence of in the first place, which is the, the nonsensical part. And everything about the cover-up that they found in the second half of the Mueller report was basically just Donald Trump saying a lot of things. He said, oh, we should fire that Mueller guy, and then no one did, right? It's, so the whole thing wound up being this giant bunch of nonsense. So now we have an actual, what, what people are saying, well, this is an actual impeachable offense. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about why, you know, this is, according to Democrats, more than just sour grapes, or more than this, them fishing for some way to sully the president's name. Let's go into the actual offense that has been committed this time. July 25th, 2019, Donald Trump took a phone call with the president of Ukraine. Um, and before we go into details of that, let's 
let's just talk about why this entire thing is in the news in the first place. Because it's a phone call between the president, who is in control of United States foreign policy, and the president of Ukraine. Why are we talking about this at all? Well, a person who works for the CIA was briefed about the call, and apparently they have dealings in the area of the world, that area of the world, and were briefed as to what the president and the president of Ukraine described, uh, or discussed, and it was described what they were talking about. And this disturbed that person who works for the CIA, the person who will be known as the whistleblower. It disturbed the whistleblower enough that they, he said he's observed a pattern by the president and conducted various interviews with people either on the call or surrounding the call, which demonstrated something that troubled him greatly. So this concern um, was put into writing. It was run up the chain as it should be. And when it got to the DOJ, it was deemed non-urgent. And this is, this is really where the controversy started, when they deemed this whistleblower complaint non-urgent. Because if it was urgent, it goes to Congress. And if it's not urgent, they say, well, Congress doesn't get to see it. So this was deemed non-urgent by the DOJ. And so it didn't go to Congress. Well, this obviously led everyone to say, well, what are you trying to hide by deeming this non-urgent? So the whistleblower, in this circumstance, he did exactly what you want people in government to do, which is if you observe troubling behavior, something that you deem illegal, inappropriate, something along those natures, you write it down, and you run it up the chain of command, and you try and hold people accountable. This is, this is good. That's a good thing. The whistleblower doing a good thing, giving him the benefit of the doubt, saying that he just observed something he, he did not think was appropriate and ran it up the chain. The problem becomes then that there is a strong possibility that the whistleblower leaked this information to Adam Schiff, which makes this appear much more inappropriate and partisan. Adam Schiff does not like Donald Trump. He's Adam Schiff, I don't know how anyone thinks he has any credibility left. He spent he went on TV saying that he had information, secret congressional information that's a smoking gun that was going to lead to the impeachment of Donald Trump that proved 100% that he worked with the Russians and did this. He went on CNN every day for two years and talked about this. And then when the Mueller report came out and nothing happened, I don't understand how anyone thinks he has any credibility left. He, he is just not a reliable uh, character in politics. He, just, he did this for two and a half years. Now they leaked this to him. The guy who has been after Donald Trump for the past two and a half years, which again makes this appear more partisan in nature. Again, we're going to give the whistleblower the benefit of the doubt. We don't know who it is. We don't know his motivations. We're just going to assume they were pure in intention. But this right here leads that to be questionable. How did Adam Schiff know about the whistleblower complaint prior to it becoming public? That is a big problem. So anyway, moving on slightly. The allegation that the whistleblower made is that during the phone call between President Trump and the President of Ukraine, he made a quid pro quo with the President of Ukraine. And this is, this would be illegal. This is actually a, a, a criminal offense, if this is true. Now there's some, <clears throat> what the, the entire thing Donald Trump was addressing with the President revolves around is a little murky, a little complicated. The brief summary is that when Joe Biden was vice president, there was a prosecutor in Ukraine who was investigating the company on which Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, was on the board. And the allegation is that Joe Biden pressured the basically the president of Ukraine to fire this prosecutor who was investigating this thing and to squash the investigation. Now that's the, that's the bit that is sort of the unflattering picture, if we're trying to paint a picture here. That's the unflattering version of Joe Biden. The one that the Joe Biden defense is that this prosecutor had a history of being corrupt and that in reality, what they were trying to do is fight this corruption in the Ukrainian government by getting rid of this prosecutor, and it had nothing to do at all with his son or this company. Now, one way or the other, 
I don't think it matters. It's obviously not good if Joe Biden did the first, the, the former as opposed to the latter, if he pressured him for the company. But I, I don't care that much at this point. There's in the past, I don't care. The problem is that the, this is almost exactly what now is happening to Donald Trump, that Joe Biden had withheld aid from Ukraine in return for getting his prosecutor fired. Now, that's almost exactly what is being, Donald Trump is being accused of, which is why this is no good. Donald Trump on the phone call also floated some idea of Hillary Clinton's emails being located, the 30,000 deleted emails being located within Ukraine, and that he should investigate that as well. Uh, this is just a big conspiracy theory. It shouldn't have been brought up. It, the, the Joe Biden thing probably deserves an investigation, but the Hillary Clinton thing just is one of those nonsensical things you just see on the internet so we're, they, that's not that's not the big deal but anyway so that's where the controversy comes from Donald Trump basically during this phone call said to the president of Ukraine hey you need to do us a favor can you investigate Joe Biden uh, and these, these allegations there's a lot of things going on that need to be investigated because if there was anything unsorted that happened then the American people deserve to know about it. That is, that's what Donald Trump said on the call, not necessarily verbatim, but that's the alleged thing. Now, everything that the whistleblower heard about this phone call was based on secondhand accounts. He was not, he did not listen in. There was a dozen or so people who listened in on the phone call. It's a routine call between Donald Trump and the president of Ukraine. It wasn't a classified call there's not two people on the line there's a dozen people who listen in on that call on the american side alone and so he got the accounts from those people and people who briefed him on the the nature of the call and whatnot but he he had no first-hand knowledge of the call now the problem for donald trump becomes the optics if you look at what people are actually concerned about. So asking somebody, there's a lot of people who say asking the president of Ukraine for help investigating Joe Biden is asking foreign, a foreign government to interfere in our 2020 election. I don't necessarily think that that's true. I don't think it, it definitely doesn't rise to the level of an impeachable offense. It doesn't. Um, this, if you, I encourage everyone, by the way, to go and read the transcript because it, Donald Trump released the transcript of the phone call. Not, not the official transcript, but the, the basic recreation of the transcript, I believe is what they were calling it, a recreation. It's five pages long. It'll take you two minutes to read. It's very quick. Go read it. Tell me the bit in there that is the thing that is going to lead to the impeachment of Donald Trump. Show it to me, because I read the whole thing. There's nothing in there. It's kind of a, It's just a ridiculous... A ridiculous thing to say that any of this rises to the level of impeachment. The problem for him is that he, they're saying that this quid pro quo, you're asking, well, what was he, what was he trying to do? He said, you do this for me, I'll do this for you. What was he going to do for them? A couple weeks prior to this call, Donald Trump had ordered people in the White House to withhold $400 million of aid to Ukraine. Now, this is actually one of the big questions that needs to be answered in this impeachment inquiry. Why was Donald Trump doing this? Now, his argument has been, and, and this is the bit that I find interesting, is that this was, this was actually the big question. Why were you withholding aid to Ukraine? If you were withholding aid to Ukraine until they investigated Joe Biden for you, then that's misusing public funds for your own personal gain and to influence an election. That's an impeachable offense. I believe that's actually a criminal offense. And so if that was the case, then Donald Trump should be impeached. Absolutely. However, as he said, he was withholding aid for two reasons. One, we've withheld aid from Ukraine in the past due to corruption, basically giving money to Ukraine, which then goes to people we don't want it to go to. This is a big problem. We've done that in the past. We've with Joe Biden himself withheld aid from Ukraine under this for this exact purpose if you you know again if you're giving him the benefit of the doubt in his situation this is exactly why he withheld aid from ukraine the other bit and this is the bit that i find very credible because this has been donald trump consistently on this issue is saying that he wants the europeans to pay their fair share 
Now, he has said this, he said this from the time he's been on the campaign trail, through his presidency, and in the transcript of the phone call with the president of Ukraine. He said that exact same thing. He said, hey, look, the United States does a lot for Ukraine. Why aren't you at, you need to go ask Germany and the other European countries why they're not doing more. So his entire, his entire argument is that he is withholding aid due to corruption and until the Europeans pay their fair share. Now this to me seems totally consistent with Donald Trump's message. So it's a big problem, but again, this is where we're talking about the quid pro quo. If he was withholding aid for the first reason, which is that he wanted an investigation of Joe Biden to strengthen his campaign and to use something to slam the Democratic frontrunner, that's an impeachable offense. If he's withholding it for any other reason whatsoever, I don't care. But no one should care because it's the president's prerogative to determine how we're spending foreign aid money. So there's the big problem. This, this whistleblower had a bunch of secondhand information about the call. The three cases for impeachment against Donald Trump right now. One, if he committed a quid pro quo. This is actually an impeachable offense. This right here would be 100% impeachable, possibly even criminal in nature. If you're misusing public funds to further yourself personally, that's impeachable. The other two cases are so weak that they're laughable. The second case being that he asked the foreign government to interfere in the election. Read the transcript not even close to real, not even close to what's, what was happening. And the third case being that then he attempted to cover it up. And we're going to cover that right now. So the cover up, the quote, the quote unquote cover up of this, that people are, are saying, look, Donald Trump knew what he did was wrong. He's covering up. They're pointing to the fact that he took all the transcript, everything from the call. And instead of going into the routine database, where they record all this stuff so it can be disseminated throughout the White House. He took the, the recordings of the phone call and everything and put it into a server that was marked code word level secure. Now code word level for those who don't know is typically what they call the most sensitive things in government, the things that nobody gets to see. And people are saying he did this because they knew what was wrong and he was trying to lock down this phone call with the Ukrainian president so that no one could see it and no one would know about the terrible things he did. And you say, well, if that's true, that's terrible. And that would definitely, that would definitely be a problem for the American people. The problem is, is that this is routine. This is routine with Donald Trump's White House. He has been doing this. He has been locking down his conversation with foreign leaders, not just in Ukraine, but from all over the world for a long time. And he's been doing this for a good reason. Donald Trump's White House is a ship that has been hit by cannon fire. It is so leaky, it can barely stay upright. So he and his administration made a choice a long time ago to try and keep everything as close to the vest as they can, try and keep the cards close to the vest. And they've been doing this with everything because they're trying to stop leaks to the media. And here, <laughs> this actually just entirely proves the the merit of that argument which is that the whistleblower made a complaint and then leaked the information to democratic operatives who hate trump in an attempt to make this a big national story which is exactly what happened so you're saying okay well he tried to cover it up well no he didn't he didn't try and cover it up but what he did do is try and secure his white house which is in his prerogative to stop leaks to a press and the Democrats who are very unfavorable um, towards Donald Trump. So there's no cover-up. There's no, And here's the other thing, too. How can there be a cover-up when this became national news and he immediately releases all the primary sources? So this becomes national news, and what do they do? They immediately release the transcript of the call. They say, look, everyone read this. The, we actually now, we have more information than the whistleblower had when he made his complaint because we actually have the transcript of the call. We can read everything that was said. And when you read it, there's a, there's a big problem because one, there's no quit. He never once talks about withholding the aid to the Ukraine. And in fact, 
just for further reference, in fact, there is now good evidence that the Ukrainian government, at the time of the call, were unaware that aid was being withheld. They had no idea. So how can there be a quid pro quo if there's no quid? Donald Trump doesn't mention the aid. The Ukrainians don't know he's withholding the aid. Where is the quid? What are you, how are you going to demonstrate that this is a quid pro quo if you are missing half of the equation? You can, if you want to argue that you shouldn't be eliciting the help of foreign officials to investigate your political opponents, I'm open to that argument. I am. But if you're talking about investigating corruption within the government, which is what Donald Trump was alluding to, again, not great optics. Is it an impeachable offense to say, hey, I think when Joe Biden was vice president, he may have done something that's illegal and it happened in your country, can you investigate it? Well, okay, you know, you're in a weird spot. It's not illegal, not illegal to do. It's not, it, it's not collusion. He's not attempting to influence an election through some sordid means. What he's doing is saying, hey, if something illegal happened, the American people should know about it. And that's, I actually don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with him asking. Also, this idea that he is the American president exerts influence with everyone he speaks with because the American presidency is the most powerful position in the world. If you are the president of the America and you and all we have to do for proof of my next statement is read the transcript. Everyone in the world is going to kiss your ass. They want to be your friend. Read the transcript of this. The first two pages are Zelensky just fawning over Donald Trump saying Oh, we want, we admire you so much here, and I've tried so much to be like you, and I want to be your best friend, and I hope I can fly on your magnificent airplane. The whole thing is him fawning over Donald Trump. And Donald Trump saying, I know, I'm great, it's awesome, and hey, maybe you can help me with this stuff, get the Europeans to pay their fair share of, for your military, because the United States shouldn't do it alone, and also... Maybe you can help me investigate, or maybe you can open an investigation into this corruption that is allegedly going on in your country. Read the whole call, five pages long. Nothing, nothing there at all. This whole thing has been ridiculous. And I don't understand how anyone, you, you know, again, you can't, there's no cover up. We have all the information. There, there are some things that we, there are some things that we have got to ask questions about. There are absolutely some things that need to be cleared up. For example, I want to see any emails. Oh, sorry, man. Got an itch. Terrible. I want to see any emails, any emails whatsoever related to why the aid to Ukraine was withheld. Because if it comes out, if there's an email floating around that said Donald Trump is, is going to withhold aid until they investigate Joe Biden, he should be impeached. He should be removed from office. Because, again, that is a quid pro quo that is not something that people should tolerate because that is using taxpayer money, $400 million, as a basically a bribe to the government to do your bidding. That's not okay. Asking them to do it, okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. But bribing them to do it with American taxpayer money, totally different story. So we need all the information about that before we can make a determination as to whether or not Donald Trump did anything uncouth. We need to know why that money was withheld. And if it turns out that it was withheld because of corruption or because he wants the European Union to take a more active role in financing the Ukraine military against Russia, okay, that's been his position the entire time. So there's nothing there. But again, looking for that quid pro quo is definitely what we need to do. Also, there was talk on the call about Donald Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. It's just, as a piece of advice to Donald Trump, get a better lawyer. Rudy Giuliani, he creates headaches for Donald Trump. I understand you like him, and I understand there's some nostalgia among certain people in the country because Rudy Giuliani was mayor of New York during 9-11, and people remember him fondly for his leadership during that time. So I understand there's some nostalgia around him. 
the man's not a good lawyer. Good mayor, good leader, not a good lawyer. And so there's a lot of controversy around Rudy Giuliani's role in this conversation and his role in investigating Biden. I have no problem with Donald Trump using his personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to go to Ukraine to investigate his political opponents. I don't care. No one should care. That's what everyone does. Oppo research on your opponents is fine. There's no problem there. The problem becomes Donald Trump speaks interchangeably about Rudy Giuliani and William Barr. One is Donald Trump's personal attorney. One is the attorney general of the United States. He talks about them interchangeably. My lawyers, Rudy Giuliani and William Barr. William Barr is not your lawyer. It's not the way it works. And so it becomes an issue. So the Rudy Giuliani said that the State Department sent him to Ukraine. Now, this could be a problem for Donald Trump as well. Did the State Department finance Rudy Giuliani's trip to Ukraine? That's a big issue. If they did that, there is a, possibly a campaign finance violation there at minimum, because if you're funding your personal attorney, uh, your personal attorney's trip to a foreign country to do oppo research on your political opponents, that's a campaign finance violation right there. And so that, that, that's an issue we need to know. Did the State Department send Rudy Giuliani to Ukraine? That's a problem. That's something I'd have an issue with. Again, taxpayer money funding a private political campaign. Yeah, that's an issue. That's not good. But we don't, again, we don't have that information either. I can tell you this. When the day that Nancy Pelosi opened impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump, he was effectively convicted of impeachment in the House. There is a, almost a 0% chance Donald Trump doesn't get impeached over this. It is going to happen. It's going to happen. It'll, he'll be impeached in the House. There's a, almost 100% guaranteed at this point because we don't need to investigate this Ukraine thing for the Democrats in the House to impeach him. They've been trying to impeach him for two and a half years. They're, going, they're impeaching him now just because they have a reason to open impeachment proceedings. And Nancy Pelosi has been holding back everyone. And finally, she just can't do it anymore. She said, oh, all right. Well, now we just got to do it because there's too much call for it. This is going to happen. He's going to be impeached in the House. There's no way, at least at this point, at least at this point, there's no way he gets convicted in the Senate. I don't see that happening. You need a two-thirds majority to remove a sitting president from office. You're not going to get that in Congress. Not over this. Not Unless, again, unless you can find me the email, that the smoking gun email that says Donald Trump said, and I quote, we are withholding aid from Ukraine until they investigate Joe Biden. Unless you can find me that email, this is nothing. This entire thing is a farce. So we'll wait and see. We're going to wait and see what happens. And hopefully we never find that email because hopefully it doesn't exist. Hopefully the president didn't do that. I don't think he did. We'll see. Again, I, if it comes out, then okay. Then get, get him out of there because that's not, not okay. But I don't think it exists. I think this entire thing is just nonsensical. And, it, and it's going to be bad for Democrats. That's the other thing, too. You look at this entire thing is bad for Democrats. There was a poll taken that found that 44% of independents said they improve of the impeachment inquiry. 50% said they didn't. Uh, suburban voters were split. 48% approve. 49% disapprove. This is going to be a big, it is a polarizing issue, and people have lost their taste for it. If you had opened impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump a year in, when people were still rabid, just hating him with a, a fiery passion, everyone, not just the, the hardcore people into politics, you would have had a better chance. You're going to impeach him in the House now, and all it's going to do is sour the taste in everyone's mouth. It is going to turn anyone even in the, the center to slightly right against you because they're going to look at this exactly like I look at this it was just to say as a bunch of nonsense and a bunch of sour grapes you look you read the transcript of this call and it reads like just a routine phone call between world leaders there's nothing there that that says I you scratch my back I'll scratch yours and there's nothing there that rises to the level of impeachment at least in my opinion 
and I think my opinion is going to be the one shared by the majority of people. And when you fail, when you fail to remove Pre- Donald Trump from office, when you impeach him in the House, this is going to look like Bill Clinton, um, the Bill Clinton impeachment. You think that didn't strengthen the Democrats in certain ways? I think it absolutely did. I think there's evidence to prove that. In some ways it hurt, but in some ways it, it helped. And if you're going to look at this as an unfair impeachment, a witch hunt. Oh, my God. I just used the phrase witch hunt. Now that sounds like a Donald Trump phrase. He's always talking about the Mueller witch hunt. Oh, God. Well, scratch that. This, it does, but it does look like a witch hunt. I can't, I can't even deny it. It looks like you're just looking for a reason as opposed to finding a reason and then opening impeachment proceedings. It looks like you've gone fishing for a reason. And now that you've hooked something that kind of can be manipulated to look like a reason, you're just going to impeach him, just to say you did. This is a huge problem. I hope, I hope, I hope that the Democrats wisen up. It doesn't look like they're going to. I just, I would hope that they would learn that the farther, the, the more they allow Trump to drive them crazy and the farther left they go, the more you alienate the middle of the country. And that's the spot you need to win if you want to capture the presidency. So let's hope that they gain some sanity, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Donald Trump, by the end of the year, will probably be impeached. Uh, Then the Senate will say, no, get the hell out of here. Nothing will happen. And then next year we go into an election with Donald Trump having survived an impeachment inquiry and then talking about the Democrats want to nullify your vote in the middle of the country because they hate Republicans that much. That's going to be his message, and it's going to be effective. And the Democrats are setting themselves up for failure. And it's, a, it's sad to watch because, you know, I'm, I, I've been very upfront about this. I'm not the biggest Donald Trump supporter in the world. Definitely not. Didn't vote for him for president. I'm probably not going to vote for him in 2020. But you're watching the Democrats just light themselves on fire, self-immolate. And it's sad. It is sad to watch. So anyway, that's where we're sitting right now. That's basically a brief overview of the impeachment inquiry and all the nonsense. Everyone go read that transcript. Go read it. Five pages. Take a second of your life to go read that transcript. Read the whistleblower complaint. That came out, um, I think, yesterday. I'm not 100% sure. But that came out recently, and it's worth a read. It's a little longer. Um, there's a couple websites up that already have it annotated, which is excellent, which is very helpful. Um, don't let them narrate it for you in their own way but just if you know you need some explanation it might be helpful but go read that but realize you already have more information than the person who wrote that report has because you have the transcript he wasn't involved in the call so read the read the transcript make your own opinion and wait 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 for this investigation to conclude before you come down one way or the other it's okay to lean i'm leaning towards this impeachment inquiry is nonsense it's okay to have leanings the other way or be in the middle don't make up your mind until we figure out the answer to those questions I posed earlier. That's going to be it for this topic. Uh, no questions this week. I do have a book I'm going to recommend this week before we end. Uh, this book. This book right here. Fire and Fury by Michael Wolff. See if you can see that. It's got a little glare. Ah, there we go. Um, so this is not a good book, but I'm going to recommend it anyway. And here's the reason. So this book was hot news for about five minutes. Throw that over there. Uh, It's about hot news for five minutes, basically because it's very juicy. Uh, Basically, Michael Wolff hung out in the White House for a while and got all the gossip, all the hearsay, wrote this very sensational book, uh, uh, sensationalist, I should say, book about all the terrible things going on in the Trump White House. And people loved it because it's a gossipy mess. Not, I don't believe almost any of that book has been substantiated again it's all rumors hearsay gossip but people loved it they ate it up and that that's exactly my point about why donald trump is trying to protect his white house from leaks because people just will dig into anything in an attempt to make him look stupid now he does that enough himself he doesn't really need too much help but People will grab onto anything and interpret it in the worst possible light and then use it to smear the president. Again, smear him due to the things that he says and does that he means, but don't 
it's not necessary to misinterpret or m- mischaracterize his opinions and views to make him seem worse than he is. We don't need to do that. He's not a Nazi, not a white supremacist. Um, we don't need to lie to win, or we shouldn't lie to win. You have to ho- uphold your principles. It's very important. You shouldn't lie just to further your agenda. It doesn't make your lie okay. So anyway, that's where we're going to leave it. Um, Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf is the book of the week. Again, not a good book, but worth a read. It's a quick read. Just go ahead and read it. It's, it's juicy, and it'll prove my point about White House leaks. That's where we're going to leave it this week. I am Tyler Cressman. I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I will see you here next Monday.